Hey, what's up guys? It's Darkham Duels, and today we're doing an Invoked Shadow deck profile. So I'm really excited for this one because this deck is actually one of my favorite versions of Shadows because it's probably the most competitive version of Shadows to date, which is insanely good because you can play around with the Invoked engine and the Shadow engine, which function relatively the same because they function around all different attributes, which is really, really cool. So without further ado, guys, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, new soon come part notification squad, and definitely check out that Patreon down in the description because we have some awesome words for you guys. Like your name, description of every single video, getting a deck profile of your choice every single month, just like this one, or even getting a signed card sent to you in the mail. So, without further ado, guys, let's get straight on into this. So, first off, we're going to be playing just two copies of Shadow Wendy. Wendy is just a two up to me because what she does is, is when she's flip face up, all Shadow monsters really quickly upkeep thing. Um, all Shadow Monsters are Flip Effect Monsters in the main deck, and they all have the ability that you can activate either the Flip Effect or the effect that they get sent to the graveyard once per turn. So that's something to keep in mind. So her Flip Effect is that you, when she's Flip Face Up, you can Special Summon a Shadow from your deck and Face Up or Face Down Defense, and if she's sent to the graveyard, then you can Special Summon a Shadow Monster from your deck and Face Down Defense. But you can only activate either or the Flip or the in Sent to Graveyard Effect once per turn. We then play a single copy of Shadow Ariel. Shadow Ariel is an awesome combo piece that you just need as a one of because what she does is, is if she's flipped face up, you get to target one of your banished shadow monsters and special summon it in face up or face down defense. And if she's sent to the graveyard by a card effect, you can target up to three cards in the graveyard and then banish them, which is really good to get rid of resources from your opponent. We then play two copies of Shadow Beast. Shadow Beast, when it's flipped face up, you get to draw two cards or and discard a card. And if it's sent to the graveyard, you get to draw a card, which is really good for the draw power of the deck. And that's why you play this card as a two of. We then play a single one of in the deck, which is one Shadow dragon if it's flip face up is a compulsory evacuation device bouncing a card on your opponent's side of the field back to the hand if it's sent to the graveyard it's a mystical space typhoon which it lets you pop a card on your opponent's side of the field that's a spell or trap we then play two copies of Shadow Squimata. Squimata, when it's flipped face up, it's essentially a man in your bug. It destroys a monster on your opponent's side of the field, and if it's sent to the graveyard, it's a foolish burial that sends a Shadow from your deck to the graveyard, which then triggers that Shadow monster's effect because they were sent to the graveyard. One copy of Shadow Hedgehog, when it's flipped face up, you get to add a Shadow Spell or Trap from your deck to your hand, and if it's sent to the graveyard, you get to add a Shadow Monster from your deck to your hand, and then my personal favorite of all the Shadows, which a lot of people don't really care for, is one Shadow Falco. Okay, Shadow Falco is kind of like that card that's kind of the underdog to me. This card is really good in my opinion, but I just like it as a one of because what it does is if you, when it's flipped face up, you get to special summon a Shadow Monster from your graveyard, and if it's sent to the graveyard, then you get to special summon it back face down which is really really good just to be able to recur your shadow monsters then we play that's it for the shadows for the other monsters we're playing three copies of alistair the invoker alistair the invoker when he's normal summoned you can add a invocation from your deck to your hand and then during either player's turn you can send this card from your hand or to the graveyard and then target a fusion monster you control and it gains a thousand attack and defense until the end phase of turn really good and a really essential combo piece because all of your invocations Invoked monsters require Alistair as one of the two pieces, which is really good because you can normal summon the Alistair and then use Super Poly with anything from a light, fire, or dark monster your opponent controls to fusion summon your monster using your monster and your opponent's monster. Or if you have Shadows on your side of the field that are normal summoned on your side of the field, you can fusion summon using Super Polymerization with a light, dark or, or a light or dark monster, which is really cool as well. So you have a lot of attributes right there to fusion summon with Super Poly as well. This deck, Super Poly was made for this deck. Then we play a single copy of Perform Age Trick Clown. When Trick Clown is sent to the graveyard, you can special summon it back to your side of the field by losing a thousand life points or another Perform Age monster in your graveyard. But you lose a thousand life points and the special summon is a zero zero, but you're just getting it on the field for additional materials for other plays. One copy of Damage Juggler. Damage Juggler is really helpful too because you can manage it from your graveyard to add a Perform Age monster from your deck to your hand, which is super helpful. It kind of comes into effect with effect damage too. I don't really use it for that effect. I usually just use it for the banish to add. And then I play two copies of Perform Age Hat Trigger. Perform Age Hat Trigger, if you control two more monsters on your side of the field, then you can special summon this card directly from your hand, which is really good to get you additional materials on your side of the field for link plays. That's the big reason that you play this card. So you can go into stuff like your copies of um, Alistair the Invoker of Madness and stuff like that that you just want to get out on your side of the field or cross sheep 
it just is really, really, really helpful to get it out on your side of the field so you can go for all those really good plays. We then play three copies of Ash Blossom. Ash Blossom's super helpful in here because she's a fire attribute, so you can go for Purgatrio, but she's also a good hand trap to be able to use against your opponent. And then two copies of Nibiru as well. The two Nibirus are basically here. They are light targets as well, which is really nice, but you can just drop them against your opponent when you're going second, because usually you want to go, I usually go second in this deck. If I get pushed to go first, I just usually end up putting a window on board and passing, and then my opponent has to deal with the window, like window macro which is really a good field but I like going second if I have Nibiru because you just drop the Nibiru against your opponent and you just handle their field and then go in for an OTK with a lot of your monsters because it's really easy to just swarm the board with this deck so that's it for the monsters guys let's get into the spells so for the spells, we're playing three copies of Call by the Grave. The three copies of Call by the Grave just stop our opponent's hand traps because we really, really, really want to get our monsters into the graveyard and keep them in the graveyard and not get hand trapped and stuff like that. We just don't want to get hand trapped at all, so we just use the Call by the Grave to stop that. Three copies of Shadow Fusion. Shadow Fusion is the best fusion spell in the entire game besides Super Polymerization and Invocation, which we play both in this deck. But Shadow Fusion, if your opponent controls a monster that's special summoned from the extra deck, then then you can fusion summon using monsters in your deck as the materials for fusion summon of a Shadow monster. So what you're going to do is usually go for Construct first by using your Windy and your copy of... If you haven't used Windy, you're going to use Windy and... Uh, what's his name uh trick clown use him and then send him to the graveyard and then get hatchet or get um the perform age back on the field and then construct's going to send something in the graveyard and it just snowballs from there and you can link with her and then use different and like it goes crazy i need to do test hands of this deck like that would be a lot of fun i'm thinking about doing that one um we then play three copies of el shadow fusion now, Shut Off Fusion is crazy good. It's a quick play spell that lets us fusion summon during our opponent's turn or during our turn. It's just basically a quick play polymerization, which is really cool for fusion summoning a Shed All monster. But I do play this card as a 3 of because I just feel like it's really good at 3 and it just helps out. We then play 3 copies of Super Polymerization. Super Polymerization just stops our opponent right in their tracks because you can interrupt your opponent so well with this card. If you just have a Shed All monster left on your side of the field and they summon a monster from the extra deck or from your from their main deck that you want to get rid of, then you can just use Super Polymerization with a Shad All monster on your side of the field or Alistair on your side of the field and Fusion Summon into one of your monsters that you really need to get on your side of the field. If you're playing in a mirror match though, this card is absolutely insane um, and it's just so good. That's why I main deck Super Poly in this deck because it's it's pretty much made for this deck. We then play three copies of Invocation, which is, again, kind of like Polymerization and Miracle Fusion mixed into one, because it lets you fusion summon a fusion monster from your extra deck using monsters from your hand as fusion material. And if... If summoning an invoked fusion monster this way, you can banish the materials from your field and or either player's graveyard. So you can snatch cards out of your opponent's graveyard to use for fusion materials as well, which is super good. Like, that's really good. Because if your opponent's drop playing Ash Blossom, if they're playing some sort of dark deck, you can summon Caliga, you can summon Purgatrio. If they're playing anything light, you can summon Makaba. I mean, you just have so many different attributes that you can deal with in this deck, which makes this card really, really good. Then we play three copies of Magical Meltdown. I do think on the next list that we actually get a real ban list, because we didn't really get a real ban list this time. I think this card is going to go to one, but that'll be fine. There's different ways to play around it, because you can always play um, copies of Terraforming or uh, copies of... Um, Oh my goodness, what's it called? Terraforming or Metaverse in order to get into this card. It's going to slow the deck down a little bit, but it'll be fine. The deck will still work. Um, but when this card is activated, you get to add an Alistair from your deck to your hand. And then basically it makes it so none of your fusion monsters can be negated when they're fusion summoned. Like they can't negate the summon. And also your opponent's cards and effects cannot activate when a fusion monster is fusion summoned. So it makes it so essentially your fusion spells are speed spell threes or speed spell fours. I mean, they just can't respond to them, which is really cool to be able to summon those monsters. And it's really, 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 really good. It's just such a good card. So that's it for the spells, guys. Let's get into the traps or the trap that we play in this deck. And it's a single copy of Reshadal Incarnation. The reason you play this card at one is because it's a good combo piece to send to the graveyard when you first uh, summon Construct. Because if you send it to the graveyard, then you can banish it because it has the ability that you can target a Shadow Monster in your graveyard and special summon it in face up or face down defense. And you can banish this and a Shadow Monster from your graveyard and then activate one of these effects. 
Change a face-up shadow monster you control uh, to face down defense, or change a shadow monster you control to face up defense, or a monster on your side of the field face up defense. So what you want to do is have this on your side of the field in face down defense, banish this in a construct, flip it back up, and then special summon the construct to your side of the field in face up um and then just special summon the construct to your side of the field and face up defense, which is then going to be used as link material and stuff like that. But that's where the combo with Ariel and Reshut Off Incarnation comes in. So that's it for the main deck, guys. Let's get into the extra deck. So for the extra deck, we're playing a single copy of Makaba, which is our big negation of the entire deck. If your opponent activates a card, which is a spell trap or monster, you discard the same kind and you negate the effect, which is really cool, and destroy it or banish it, which is really good just to banish stuff. One copy of Purgatrio. Purgatory is here for the OTK because it gains 12, 200 attack for each monster your opponent controls and can attack all monsters your opponent controls and it inflicts piercing damage. So it's really big and really good. Uh, one copy of Kaliga. Kaliga is neat because if um, and it, if an effect is attempted to activate it and none of the players can activate their effects for the rest of the turn and then when this card phase of card is on the field each player can only attack with one monster during each battle phase. So it really slows the game down. Um, I really 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 like that. It's just really good. It makes it makes it basically so you can only tackle one monster, only activate one effect, which is really good to have this and wind on the field because then you can only special summon once, and then you can only act activate one effect and only attack once. It just totally shuts down the game. I play one of the new um, invoked tower. If you guys didn't know what this does, it's actually the um, ta spellbook tower because the spellbooks and Alistair are like connected, which is cool. So if you look at this, this is actually the grand spellbook tower, um, just transformed into a um, person which is cool, into a mech, uh, essentially Optimus Prime. But if this card is special summon, you have to use Diffusion Monster to summon this card. If it's special summon or a monster special summon to your opponent's field, you can target a card your opponent controls, or target a monster your opponent controls and destroy it. And then also, once per turn, you can banish a fusion monster from your graveyard, and this card's attack gains equal to the banished monster's attack. So this card can go up to uh, 2,800 boost with the copy of Construct getting banished, which is pretty big, which is 4,800. That's I mean, that's decent. We then play two copies of Construct. Yes, we do have that ultimate rare for this. Why would we play anything else? We do have the Ultra and the Ultimate, so they know they're getting slammed with two different constructs but basically what this card does is she's not once per turn but if she's special summon you get to send a shadow from your deck to the uh, graveyard any shadow card from your deck to the graveyard and the start of damage step if she battles a special summon monster it's instantly destroyed and then also if this card is sent to the graveyard you get to target a shadow spell or trap and add it back to your hand so if you have shadow fusion in the graveyard then you can just add it back which is super cool we then play Two copies of Winda. Winda makes it so that you, both players can only special summon once per turn. And she also can't be destroyed by her opponent's card effects. She also shares the ability that if she's sent to the graveyard, then you get to special summon or add that shit all spell or trap directly from your graveyard to your hand. Uh, then I play a single copy of a Pokalone. A Pokalone is good. But you have to use two Shadows with different attributes. So you have to use Ariel or Ariel, uh, Windy, plus one of the Dark Ones, or one of your Fusion Monsters, plus a Dark One, or any of the Shadow Monsters. So it's really a good card, but you just need it as one-up. It can't be destroyed by battle, and if it's Special Summoned, you can target a face-up card on the field and negate its effects. Or, if this card is sent to the graveyard, you get to add a Shadow card from your deck or graveyard to your hand. And then you discard a card, which is good because it triggers your other shadow monsters that are sent to the graveyard. So then I'm playing an Access Code Talker package in the extra deck, which is a single copy of Access Code Talker. If you don't have this card, you can play Boral Sword. I almost played Boral Sword or Appaloosa. You can play either or, but I wanted that extra amount of pops on my opponent's side of the field. And plus it's a speed spell for pop. And if you guys don't know what this does, it just takes two effect monsters to link into this card. And what it does is your opponent cannot activate cards or effects in response to this card's effect, which makes it a speed spell for. And if this card is Link Summoned, you can target a Link Monster that was used um, to Link Summon this card, and it gains attack equal to the Link Monster's rating times a thousand. So if you target something like Nightmare Unicorn, it goes up by 3k, going up to 5300, which is really good. And then also you can banish a Link Monster from your field or graveyard to destroy a card on your opponent's side of the field, and for the rest of the turn, you cannot banish monsters with the attribute as that monster. But that's fine because we play four different attributes in the extra deck that are four different um, attributes for the monsters. So we play Nightmare Unicorn, which is our dark attribute, which is going to spin a card on your opponent's side of the field, which is really good. Alistair the Invoker is also a dark, so that doesn't count. He's just 
just good for the Alistair engine being able to use that monsters, but you have to keep in mind that you can only link somebody to him by using a dark or a, a two different attributes and two different types. So you can't use two shuttles or any of the spellcasters. You can't use two spellcasters. You have to use something like a fiend or a fairy or something like that to link into him. So he's a little bit situational. I don't use him all that much, but he's there. Uh, Cross Sheep is the one that I usually use, and it's the Earth monster of the extra deck. And this card is good in any fusion deck. And what it basically does is if you fusion summon under this card, you can special summon a level 4 lower monster from your graveyard. Uh, Alamirage, because it's a fire target, and if you normal summon out your copy of Alistair, then you can link the Alistair away, summon the Alamirage, and then link the Alamirage away and summon out your copy of Secure Garden Up, which is a light target for your Shadows, just to instantly get a light target on your side of the field because it requires a Cyverse Link monster to summon this card. So you have Light, Fire, Earth, and Dark for the Access Code Talker and a, and a uh, 3 to summon this. I really wish I had room for Appaloosa too, but I just don't. Like, the extra deck is so tight that you don't really have room for it. The only thing that I was considering dropping was the new one, and I was like, man, I really want to try that out. So I haven't dropped it yet, but I might in the future. I don't know. I need to play test it more, but this card has been coming in super clutch. So that's it for the deck, guys. I hope you did enjoy it. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Definitely check out the uh, Patreon down in the description. And definitely give us a like and a subscribe, guys, because it really, really helps out the channel. And if you guys want to see test hands of this, definitely let me know down in the comments. I'm really considering doing test hands of this deck. And as you can tell, I really love this deck. And I've entered multiple tournaments with it, and it's just super fun. So anyways, guys, this is Dark Arm Duels. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Hit the bell. This can come part notification squad, and I'll see you guys in the next video. See you later, guys.